Hello, everybody, and welcome back here and now to the Haydar Aliyev Sports Complex in Baku, Azerbaijan. Again, the AIBA World Boxing Championships. It's the signature event on the AIBA calendar going back 35 years to its beginnings in 1974 when the AIBA World Boxing Championships made its debut in one of the heartlands of boxing, La Habana, Cuba. Boxers aged 17 to 34 are united every two years to compete against the best in their division from around the world. The athletes participate in the official 10 weight categories in accordance with the AIBA technical and competition rules with hopes of claiming ultimate glory, becoming a world champion. This is the 16th World Championships with over 650 boxers from over 125 countries. And we're being televised in over 100 countries around the globe, as well as in, on AibaBoxingTV.com. This tournament will have particular significance as it is the first major qualifying event for the London 2012 Olympic Games. With that said, we'll do a quick rundown of this afternoon's weight categories in Ring B, which you shall be watching. We'll be covering four bouts in the men's bantamweight division, which is 56 kilograms. We'll then move on to the men's middleweight division, where we'll be looking at the 75 kilogram boxers. And wrapping it up the afternoon session here in round B will be the men's heavyweights, the big boys, 91 kilograms. There'll also be boxing going on in ring A with other weight categories and other contestants. Ultimately, to move on to the semifinal round, which will be the day after next on Friday. The winners of that round will then move on to the finals on Saturday. We expect a packed house, and it will get more packed as the tournament progresses. I am Castle Chalice, your commentator for Ring B, which will be calling the action, or I'll be calling the action, rather, for all of the events throughout the day. The first matchup here in Ring B will be between Bulgaria and England. Bulgaria will be putting forth, as you see right here, making his way to the ring in the red corner, Detlin Dalkliev, 28 years old. He is ranked number one in the world he will be meeting that man, Luke Campbell, from England, 24 years old. Both of these boxers have had a very, very exciting path to get here. Fatih Madfua is the referee for this about from France. The judges, Tadik Butar Trueba, Wang, and Castro, will be counting the punches from ringside. With that said, we got the boxers making their way into the ring right now. And there you see it, Talalkliev and Campbell, first up in this quarterfinal bantamweight matchup. So as the boxers get set, they get their chin guards adjusted by their corners, get the chin straps rather, excuse me, the head, the head guards, or the head gear as it's called, the chin straps securing it to their heads so that the punches which land do not loosen it in any way. And we could see the judge checking the gloves of the boxers, making sure that they've got their jock straps and their protectors properly fixed. And we are going to get set in just a moment here for action. Detalin Dalkiev from Bulgaria yesterday in the round of 16, he beat Omerbek Malabakov from Kyrgyzstan by a score of 16 to 14 to earn him his spot here today. Luke Campbell, he had his opponent Mohamed Kodahi outpointed, Mohamed from Algeria, by a score of 11 to 9. So both of these boxers with a two point margin to get here today. Talal Kiev in the red corner from Bulgaria, Campbell from the blue corner of the blue corner from England. So both boxers start out with a nice tall stance, light on their feet, well rested 
from the yesterday's bouts. This is some exciting boxing. As we said, we've been watching Campbell boxing out of the southpaw stance. You could see him pushing out that right jab. The Lalkiev boxing out of the orthodox stance. A nice sharp left hand by Campbell. A nice right straight down the middle by Delalkiev. The boxers look very keen and intent on standing toe to toe throughout the entirety of this bout. And it's no surprise. You don't get to this level of the World Amateur Boxing Championships by being timid, by being shy. It requires skills and poise, athletic ability, and all of these boxers in the tournament have demonstrated that tenfold. Now you can see, one of the things you should note when a boxer is boxing in the orthodox stance as opposed to the conventional stance, you have the two lead feet tend to step on each other's toes. That's just the nature of the beast, as they say. And we could see here that occasionally the toe of Campbell will step on the toe of Delalkiev or vice versa. That's just an obstacle that each boxer needs to deal with throughout the progression of the event and certainly the bout more immediately. So Campbell's now doing a good job using his jab to keep Delalkiev off of him. Nice three punch combination followed up by a right hand. So Campbell definitely ready to throw. Delalkiev has a nice guard and now he comes back. There's a nice ebb and flow to this bout so far. Each boxer taking his turn, giving and receiving, waiting for the opportunity to see the mistake of another, of his opponent rather, and to capitalize on that. It's not much margin for error here at this level, particularly when both of these boxers are boxing at the, the highest level. The fundamentals are generally well intact, and it becomes a chess match of sorts. Delalkiev pushing Campbell back. Campbell doing a good job circling to his right. You notice Campbell circling to his right, which is the correct way for him to be circling, because it's the big right hand of Delalkiev that he's trying to avoid. So naturally, by circling to the right, it becomes a, a harder punch for Delalkiev to land. And Delalkiev is going to need to box like this and keep Campbell in the corner, if possible, or up against the ropes to prevent him from circling away, where he has a better opportunity to land that big right. Just a few seconds left here in round number one. In spirited action so far. Be interesting to see how the judges have scored this. And there it is, three to two after the first round. Campbell over Delalkiev. So it's a very close match so far, as many of the bouts have been since the round of 16. Again, there's very subtle differences between the boxers at this level. Sometimes they're intangibles, like heart and will and desire. Sometimes they're more tangible, like speed, strength, footwork, all of which comes into play. The boxers are what I like to call the ultimate athletes because they really bring every element of the physical and mental to bear. And there's no one else to turn to. There's no other teammates to lean on. When they're in the ring, it's just them. A pair of gloves and some trunks. So as we're getting set now for the seconds to step out of the ring, boxers getting ready to do battle for round number two. Delalkiev has been boxing in the, the semi-pro league of Aiba, the World Series of Boxing. So he's had some decent experience as well, boxing without his headgear, lighter gloves. So he's used to seeing punches come from lighter gloves as well as heavier gloves, most likely in sparring. May give him a slight edge to the extent that he may be more equipped to handle a heavier punch having received them without his headgear. Most of the amateurs, unless they're in that league, are going to be always doing their sparring and their competitive boxing with the headgear on. It takes a little getting used to, a slight adjustment to take punches without the headgear, as naturally there's less cushioning and protection. Delakliev, he took first place at the 2009 Aiba World Championships two years ago in Milan. So he's trying to repeat that performance here this week. Campbell, you see, snuck a nice left hand in there. And Delakliev is pushing him back. And now Campbell's able to turn his man and Delakliev into the ropes. The referee brings him back out. 
Stiff right jab by Campbell. Campbell's been demonstrating a, a nicely educated jab throughout the course of this tournament, and this bout is no different. Delakliev rushing forward with a right-left combination of his own, so Delakliev showing a nice, tight defense, a high guard, typical of many of the Eastern European boxers. Very fundamental, but very fundamentally sound. Campbell's hands are a little, a little looser on the defense. They're down a little lower, as you can see. They also are a little wider. The Lalkliev would be well served to keep throwing straight punches in that instance. Campbell's going to have a tougher time landing those straight punches if the guard by the Lalkliev is up and tight as it has been. There's a left-right-left -left combination by Campbell, mostly blocked by Delakliev. And now you see Delakliev staying in the pocket there. He does a good job of staying right in there with Campbell, not retreating, but rather just bobbing and weaving and leaning back to avoid those punches. Much better equipped to come right back with a counterpunch of his own if he stays in the pocket. A right hand by Delakliev to the body, and Campbell remaining poised. Nice right hook upstairs, followed by a left to the body downstairs. And there's a nice one-two combination by Campbell. Those are likely not scoring points. In order to score, you need to have a clean punch with the front part of the glove landing on the face or body of your opponent, unobstructed by a block such as that. Was well blocked by Delakliev. And now Delakliev is back on the offensive. He now throws a nice chopping left hand to the right temple of Campbell. And Campbell's able to regain his composure in another great round of boxing. It'll be interesting to see, and sure enough, Luke Campbell maintains his one-point edge. Now it's a score of six to five, so the referees had it 3-2 in the first round for Campbell, and they found it as a draw, at least for round two, with a score of three to three that maintains the one-point advantage for Campbell, and it's going to be an extremely exciting final round, the corner for Delakliev now urging him to keep throwing punches to the body, left and right, alternating hands. It would be nice to see Luke Campbell throwing more jabs to keep his man off. Keep in mind, Delakliev now is down a point in the third round. He needs to come on strong. He really needs to be the aggressor. He needs to bring the fight to Campbell. Campbell, conversely, is better served in this instance not getting into a a slugging contest with Delakliev, who looks like he may be a slightly stronger puncher. Instead, Campbell would be much better off using his jab to keep Delakliev off of him, to keep circling away from the big right hand of Campbell, uh, excuse me, of Delakliev, and to otherwise throw that left hand after the jab when he sees an opening. So let's see, there's the jab, there's the left hand by Delakliev excuse me, by Campbell. Here comes Delakliev now, throwing a left hand. Gets a little messy in there. The referee's going to instruct Campbell to wipe his gloves off his trunks. And Delakliev leads with the right. Not an easy punch to land, the lead right. Usually is better, better equipped to land after a, a jab or two. Campbell doing a great job keeping his distance. Great spatial awareness by young Luke Campbell. He's 24 years old. Luke himself, the 2010 British national champion. He also was in Milan. However, he didn't fare as well in 2009 at the Aiba World Championships. He lost in the second preliminary round to the Mongolian Idirku by a score of 11 to 9. And now you see the boxers continuing to mix it up here in the center of the ring. Campbell doing a great job with that jab, using it as a defensive weapon, perhaps more than an offensive weapon, which is just as good. It looks like he's using that as an offensive, but unless he's going to come back with that big left hand, as he does there to the body, it's really being used as a defensive mechanism to keep Delakliev off of him. And Delakliev has a minute and a half. We're just at the halfway point now through the third and final round, and if he hasn't caught up on the scorecards, he's going to need to start thinking of how best to do that. He'd be well served to, I would think, to get inside. He's going to need to get close. He's going to need to get inside that jab at Campbell. The best way to do that is through footwork. If he could get underneath, duck underneath that jab of Campbell's and use his feet to get close and throw some shots to the body, it might be his easiest way to rack up some points. Again, remember those Campbell hands on defense aren't that tight, and his elbows are a little wide. 
not the way we like to see it in the amateurs, but it does give a, a bigger canvas for which Delacliev to paint on. And of course, he'd be painting with the lefts and rights of his as the brushes. So let's see now if Campbell's going to ab be able to keep Delacliev off of him for the final 30 seconds. A wide left hand by Delacliev is blocked. I'd like to see a little more energy, a little more sense of urgency from Delacliev. I can't see where he's clearly, that's going to be a, an improper punch by Delacliev. And the first problem is that Campbell's head was down, so the referee's going to, is going to caution him on that. Delacliev threw that punch while Campbell's head was down, and most of those punches by Campbell were blocked. Delacliev needs to get a couple of more punches in for good measure here if he wants to be certain. It would seem Campbell keeping his distance, fighting a very smart fight, it seems Campbell is. Mixing it up when he needs to, keeping his distance when he needs to as well. So Campbell feels confident. He goes back to his corner, raising his hand. He thinks he's got it. It'll be very interesting to see if he's been able to maintain that lead. That third round looked much like the first and second did. So if the judges found it the same, and we didn't miss any punches that may have landed from here at ringside, Campbell may have eked out a very close decision. Let's see right now as they meet in the center of the ring, shake hands, which is always a sign of good sportsmanship and promoted highly by Aiba for the boxers to remain as good sportsmen throughout in victory as well as in defeat. And now we're going to get the computerized system which is tallying up the scores. The results of that will be sent up to the center of the ring. And the winner is Luke Campbell by a score of 12 to 8. What a wonderful performance by young Luke. He's really proud and he deserves to be. He just boxed an extremely smart fight. He was in there against the number one boxer in the world, the winner of the 2009 Aiba World Championships. And he showed him that with smart boxing and with scientific boxing, as Luke Campbell demonstrated, keeping the spatial awareness at an all-time high, keeping his distance using that jab. You see here, Luke Campbell was able to keep Delacliev off him when necessary and engage as the opportunities presented themselves. So nice left hand there by Campbell. Snuck it in and was able to keep his distance. So great job to Luke Campbell. Congratulations. You're moving on to the semifinals.